got some Falcons news to get to on today's show as Atlanta is signing offensive tackle Storm Norton off the Saints practice squad, according to Mike Garofolo. So we're going to break down the signing, and then we're going to talk about the injury news, unfortunately, to Troy Anderson and some possible replacements. But let's get familiar with Storm Norton. I mean, just going off name alone, anyone named Storm has got to be someone you do not want to mess with. If you ever get into a bar fight with a guy named Storm, you're probably going to lose. Now, some background on Mr. Norton. He was a UDFA in 2017 out of Toledo, signed with the Detroit Lions initially. In his NFL career, he has 32 games played, 18 starts. Most of that came with the LA Chargers from 2020 to 2022. But he was with the Saints briefly. He was on their practice squad, and Atlanta picked him up. When we look at the Falcons' updated depth chart now, Storm Norton's going to be your backup for Caleb Mayfield, excuse me, Caleb McGarry, who has played like Jalen Mayfield. And maybe this is a signing of a sign of there is some shakeup happening on the offensive line. It also could be a sign of a roster spot was just open because maybe the Falcons are putting unfortunately Troy Anderson on IR so they decided to fill that roster spot with a good football player like Storm Norton and this offensive line needs a little kick in the butt but with that we kind of segue to the Troy Anderson injury news here as Arthur Smith said Troy Anderson's arm slash shoulder injury didn't look good says nothing is official yet but his prognosis for the rest of the season doesn't look promising according to Tory McElhaney so we're going to kind of break down the injury news and whatnot, but I do want to show Troy Anderson some love, let him know the Dirty Birds are rallying around him, and hopefully he can get back on the field soon. So type his jersey number, 44, down below in the comment section, because this is a brutal loss to the team. Troy Anderson was someone that we all had penciled in as that sophomore breakout season, really kind of take control the middle of the defense for Atlanta, because a lot of investments were made in this Falcons defense, but... Terry Fontenot also needed some of his draft picks to hit and have that second-year breakout season, and Anderson was definitely one of those guys. Now, Troy Anderson comes off a 69-tackle season a year ago. Very nice. Three tackles for loss and one pass breakup. We didn't get to see a whole lot of Anderson at the start of this season. right? We're only three games in, and two of those three games, he suffered an injury, right? Went to concussion protocol after week two and then suffered that arm slash shoulder injury in week three. So not really fair to Anderson to critique what we saw out of him from 12 quarters, if he even played 12 quarters, of a body of work. It's too small of a sample size. But he wasn't like lighting the world on fire. But I was very optimistic that he was on a good trajectory and he was going to be a good piece of this defense moving forward. Now, I want everyone watching right now to... Be their own Falcons today, host, and let me know who you think should replace Troy Anderson. We're going to run through five replacement options. As I film right now, he has not been placed on IR officially, but pot uh, potentially by the time you are watching this, he is on IR, and that's why Storm Norton was signed. And so Falcons wanted to you know, fill up a roster spot with someone that uh, they think was a good football player. Now let's get into my Anderson replacements, though, and we start with some in-house options, beginning with Nate Landman. So... Nate Landman might not be a household name, but to me, this is the most logical decision. It's next man up mentality, right? We're talking about the inside linebacker position here. I mean, the Jets lost their starting quarterback, and they still rolled with Zach Wilson for at least the next two weeks. I don't think you're going to see Atlanta make some blockbuster trade or anything like that. They're going to have the next guy step up, give him a shot. Hopefully, he can fill Troy Anderson's spot well. And if not, maybe a different conversation takes place before the trade deadline. But for now, you roll with your guys, you roll with your roster, and you see if your next man up mentality can work out here. So as for another player on this roster that could fill this void, what about Tay Davis? Tay Davis and Nate Lamon both serving as the backup linebackers. And I remember when Atlanta released Michael Walker, me and Rolly both said, I, I don't hate that move, but if an injury happens to Anderson or Ellis, you are short-staffed. I mean, you are talking Buffalo Wild Wings on a Sunday, and there are no servers to be found. That's where we are right now. It's Tay Davis and Nate Lamon. Two guys, even pretty good Falcons fans, may have never heard of before. I don't really want to see Tay Davis start. No offense to Tay Davis, but he's had a lot of starting experience, a lot of NFL experience so far, and no team has really hung on to him. He was with the New York Giants. He was with the Cleveland Browns. 
and he was practice squad to active roster taxi guy, and he's yet to really find a home. So he might be your next best option, but I'll be honest, it's not a very good option. Now, what is a good option is checking out today's sponsor, which is Prize Picks. Prize Picks is a daily fantasy sports app where all you have to do is pick more or less for two to six player stat projections, and you can win up to 25 times your money on any entry. Prize Picks is super simple and user friendly. I spend like one to two minutes on the app every Sunday morning making my selections. So if you're in the Oval Office or you're on your way to the game or the bar to watch the Falcons game, get on Prize Picks and start making some money. Now, this week, here is who I'm taking on Prize Picks. We'll get my selections up in just a moment here because the Falcons play across the pond against the Jags. And I'm taking more on Desmond Ritter's passing total, which is 193 yards. I'm taking more on Drake London to go over 46 and a half receiving yards. In a bit of a revenge game, Calvin Ridley against his former team. I'm taking less on 65 and a half yards. A.J. Terrell is just going to put Calvin Ridley right in his pocket. No tomatoes, no fruit, no vegetables whatsoever for Mr. Ridley. He is going to be bottled up. But I like the more on Ritter and Drake London's total projections. Go to prizepicks.com slash CLNS and use code CLNS for a first deposit match up to $100. The link for that is in the comments and the description of today's video. Prize Picks, daily fantasy sports made easy. Now, you're not going to like this next replacement option because producer Rolly and I have had a tough time getting this video off the ground. If you want some behind the scenes here, we started filming. Kyle Van Noy went to the Ravens practice start squad. We started filming again, and Atlanta signed Storm Norton. So we're back for our third attempt here, and we're going to stick with Kyle Van Noy in the script here. Now, he signed with the Ravens practice squad, but that's all he did, sign with the practice squad, which means every other team has an opportunity to sign him right to their active roster. Now, my suspicion is he's on the practice squad right now, kind of getting up to game speed, and the Baltimore Ravens are probably going to elevate him to their active roster within a few weeks. But Atlanta didn't expect to have an injury pop up so soon at the linebacker spot. So maybe they swoop in and they steal Kyle Van Noy off the Ravens practice squad. Baltimore would have a right of refusal, like they could elevate him before the Falcons could sign him. But if they don't want to put anyone on the practice squad or they don't want to release anyone, well... They're kind of SOL. Now, Van Noy is a, as experienced as it comes. He's got a lot of reps and a lot of snaps under his belt. He was with the Patriots for a long time. He's with the Chargers, with the Dolphins. He's been in a lot of different uniforms. He's been in a lot of jerseys. He can step in, and he can pick up a defense better than anyone else can. He might not be as quick and as nimble as he once was in Foxborough, but it is late September at this point. There is no one on the street right now who's going to come in and probably do a better job than Troy Anderson's doing. You just try to find someone who can do as good as a job. And Van Noy would probably do as good as a job as Tay Davis or Nate Lamb. Now, some other notable names that you might recognize. Jalen Smith, one-time all-pro linebacker. He is still on the market. Now, he is currently on the Saints practice squad. And as we just saw, the Falcons have no problem with poaching players off of New Orleans practice squad. Jalen Smith, most notably with the Dallas Cowboys, he had a breakout season back in, I think, 20, 2019, 2020. He got a huge contract, and then he started like falling asleep in meetings was the word in Dallas, and he bounced around in 2021, going from the Cowboys to the Packers to the Giants. He kind of stuck on in New York in 2022, 88 tackles, three tackles for loss, one sack, pretty good numbers after a dreadful 2021 season. He did, he's a decent run stopper, but don't ask him to cover anyone. He, he cannot cover anyone to save his life. He can stop a nosebleed, but he cannot go foot for foot with any tight end or any slot receiver for that matter. So if you want to stop the run, this is your man. If you want pass coverage, he is not your man. And then finally, what about a reunion? Is anyone really opposed to Michael Walker coming back to Atlanta? I think when the Falcons released Michael Walker, they were sort of doing him a solid, and I think he understands that, and there might not be any bad blood between the two sides because they released him so early in training camp. It had it gave him an opportunity to go to Chicago and try and you know catch on with the Bears and maybe make their roster, but that did not happen. He's currently in Las Vegas on the Raiders practice squad, and so if you're looking for someone who knows the playbook-ish, I mean, it's a new defensive coordinator this year with Ryan Nielsen. 
compared to Walker's previous years in Atlanta, but at least he knows how to get to the facility. He knows his way around the locker room. He knows this team and whatnot. Michael Walker last year had 107 tackles, four tackles for loss, one sack, six pass breakups. I think this is probably the most uh, perfect fit for the Falcons at this point if they want someone who can just step right in and do the job and not need a couple of weeks to warm up. This is your guy for that. Now, which linebacker would you go out and sign? All three of these players are currently on practice squads, so you could poach them from that team. All three of those teams would have an opportunity to elevate that player to their roster so that they don't go over to Atlanta. Now, I can see that happening with Kyle Van Noy. As for Jalen Smith and Michael Walker, I could see the Falcons easily you know, snatching them away and bringing them down to ATL. For me, I lean towards Michael Walker. He's got the familiarity. He could fit like a glove in this defense. We learned last year that he's probably not a long-term piece. That's why Atlanta went out and, and signed Caden Ellis, and then they moved uh, Troy Anderson up on their depth chart. But now that you're out Troy Anderson, Michael Walker is the next best fit. That's going to do it for us on today's show. Thank you so much for tuning in. We're going to sign off. We're going to see everyone later with more Falcons coverage. Mm -hmm.